Hey guys, it's Undead Chronic, back again with another response video. This time we're responding to quite the unfortunate incident. I say unfortunate because, well, someone was killed, someone lost the rest of their life in prison, um, and there's three daughters that are going to grow up with uh, no parents involved. Yeah, it's kind of a messed up story, but the title of this article, guess gotta go into it. Utah man sentenced to 30 years and death of his wife on a cruise. Now let's read this uh, title here. Husband is jailed for 30 years after punching wife to death in front of their three kids on a cruise to celebrate 18th wedding anniversary before blaming him, for blaming her for laughing at him. So, yeah, we have a couple on a cruise. Uh, I think they were like in their 40s. Yeah, Kenneth, 43, and his 39-year-old wife, Christy. So, mid-40s American family with three kids. They decide to go on an Alaskan cruise for their anniversary. Isn't that so, such a nice little, you know, little American family, Utah, going in for a cruise. Uh, on the cruise, apparently there were some words exchanged, and uh, Mr. Uh, Kenneth here found out that he was going to get divorced from his wife on the day of their anniversary on an Alaskan cruise that he paid for. And he, um, I think they, the defense said he had a history of bipolar, we'll get into this, had a history of um, untreated bipolar disorder and uh, alcohol um dependence that's what the defense said uh lost his shit he just lost it and he beat his wife to death in front of their kids so wow uh there's a lot that can be learned from the situation so let's just get into it before i do if you guys want to support the reporting of marital violence on alaskan cruise ships on every friday consider donating to paypal.me slash the unachronic feminists I will not stop until every single incident of marital murder on an Alaskan cruise ship has been covered on this channel. So if you guys have any stories, just hit me up with that. You know, we can make a series about it. And why you shouldn't take your wife to a... Or why... why, why if your husband wants to go on a, a cruise to Alaska, you should ask these 10 questions first. <laughs> oh, oh, I feel bad for the girl, though. Um, yeah, I feel bad for... Um, Christy, yeah, Christy didn't deserve to get beat to death, but let's read the, the image here. Kenneth Manners, 43 from Utah, was sentenced to 30 years in federal prison, followed by five years of supervised release on Thursday. He pleaded guilty in February 2020 to the second degree murder of his 39 year old wife, Christy Mazanis, pictured together on the left in July 2017. So it took this guy three years to get to trial. Oh my goodness. So, like, he killed his wife in February 2017. And then it took him, or July 2017, and then it took until February 2020 to get, you know, a, a guilty. He pleaded guilty. Did this didn't even go, did this go to court? We'll see. Um, Mazarnas beat Christy to death on board the Emerald Princess cruise ship on the right, where they were celebrating their anniversary with their three daughters and extended family. Okay. Just a word of it. Just this is interesting. If you are going to divorce your husband... If you're going to divorce your wife, are you going to divorce your partner? That is something that needs to, it, it's almost like, uh, you know, I, I kind of think the situation where a girlfriend breaks up with a dude. I've, I, I've had, I've had several girlfriends before and I've got, you know, I know dudes and girlfriends before and there's a pretty common, you know, the girl will break up with you like two months before she actually breaks up with you. She breaks up with you in your head and her heart. And she doesn't want to talk about the issues. She doesn't want to talk about the problems. She just resolves them on her own. And once she's ready to leave, then she'll pick up all her stuff and say, hey, um, by the way, I'm broken up with you. Yeah, I know you still want to fight and give everything you can to this relationship. But I decided two months ago that I wasn't going to talk to you about any of these problems. And I was going to slowly get over the fact that you are still attached to me. But I need to unattach myself to you so I can leave. It's a disgusting absolutely disgusting display of toxic femininity and i'm talking about that's when a girlfriend does it right and a girlfriend goes i just want to break up with you and you're like what, what, what what's wrong and you try to you know dude's trying to fix it she made her decision three months ago okay we have like the most extreme version of that i don't really know it but the dude i assume he's working took his wife and their three daughters on a cruise and their extended family came along too okay so in front of the entire extended family she told him she wanted a divorce okay was that the first time he heard that if that was the first time he heard that and she knew he had a history of untreated bipolar 
uh, disorder. Bruh. Bruh. Are you kidding me? It's like you're trying to castrate him in front of his family, the, in the extended family, and he's mentally ill. This is this chick pulled this chick picked the worst time to try to use the family court to ruin someone. Like it's just like the dude's um, alcohol dependent, bipolar, in front of his children and their extended family. She goes, "I want a divorce," and then he beats her to death. Yikes. Yeah, I mean, like, the same what should have happened here. She should have just told him I wanted a divorce in an email. And then she could have, um, I don't, she could have used the entire U.S. police military complex to smash this guy into pieces. But she decided she wanted, uh, I, you know what, it might have been. I, I think it was, it, it, the thing is, is that this was planned or was it like a spur of the moment emotional thing? In terms of her choosing to tell him to get divorced. If it was planned, I'm going to tell this guy I want to divorce him on a cruise he pays for in front of our kids on the day of our anniversary in front of my extended family. That's what I'm planning to tell him I want to divorce him. Uh, that's a very different type of woman than one who just goes, I can't handle getting slapped around like a rubber chicken. I can't handle this dude drinking all the time and all this horrible abuse he does. I, I want to divorce you. All right, those are two completely different women. One is cold and calculating, trying to make the divorce announcement as painful as possible, and the other one's just trying to escape a, um, you know, an abusive situation. But uh, we can start reading the article here. Here we go. Where they were celebrating the anniversary of their three daughters and extended family. The couple got into an argument where Christy said she wanted a divorce. Two of the daughters heard their mom screaming and saw their father pounding her head with closed fists. He then tried to throw her overboard. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's not really any defending the dude in this situation. Obviously, he murdered his wife and then tried to straight up throw her off the cruise boat. But let's see if we can uh, parse some details out of here. By Becky. Juno, Alaska. A Utah man was sentenced to 30 years in prison with a federal judge describing the crime as violent and brutal. Can you tell me, Mr. Federal Judge, a, be a, a, a death by beating that isn't violent and brutal? I can't stand it. Like, just like this, this, this woman who was beaten to death was done so in a violent, brutal manner. Okay. Can you show me a gentle way to beat someone to death? Actually, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> I'm not asking to be tied up with some big titty redheads to come out and to beat me off to death. Although James Wall Maxwell would be very jealous if that was the case. No, I'm just, I'm just tired of these feds, these federal judges. It's a brutal crime. Someone was killed. It's a hate crime because someone hated the person they killed. Oh, get out of here. Prosecutors had sought life in prison for Kenneth, who pleaded guilty last year. His attorneys requested seven and a half years. Kenneth looked back briefly toward where two of his daughters sat in the courtroom before being let out. Ooh, that's, that's intense. He looked at his daughters before he got led to the jail. Let's see. His defense attorney said that he had brain abnormalities that a defense expert deemed consistent with injuries caused by playing contact sports. This combined with what was at the time an undiagnosed bipolar disorder and a problematic combination of prescribed medication and alcohol resulted in an aberrant episode of violence, the filing states. Um, you can be a very reasonable person, very reasonable person, with a completely in charge of your faculties, and still choose to commit an atrocious act of violence. But every time someone gets caught in the court, they'll always try to blame the violence, their choice. They'll try to take the agency away from themselves. It's basically like defense lawyers are women. They're, they're like women that go to school to learn how to take all blame and put it on something else. You know what? Maybe we should talk to defense lawyers about understanding female. That'll be a great interview. Let's continue. Um, Manzer's attorneys in a court filing said he had brain armor. Now we got there. Burgess said there's competing evidence offered about his culpability and experts failed to show what crack just led to the fine. Prosecutors have disputed the defense's medical claims in court documents described Kenneth's actions as intentional, triggered by his wife telling him she wanted to leave the cruise ship and that she wanted a divorce. Prosecutors said Christy Mazarns told her husband that she wanted a divorce during an argument about his behavior on the night of her death. Okay, so there was an argument about how he was behaving. And then she said she wanted a divorce and she wanted to leave the cruise ship. That that seems to me like a more of a um, uh, someone tried to escape than someone tried to, you know, shame and destroy a man from his family. 
Prosecutor said Ken had issues with anger that he had acknowledged previously that he had acknowledged restraining his wife in the past and punching holes in the walls. I mean, I've restrained a lot of women in my past. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, defense, att defense attorneys said the couple had a long and happy marriage. And Jamie McGrady, a federal public defender, accused prosecutors of selectively parsing details from statements, trying to paint him as someone who's abusive. Yeah, so Christine's life was violently ended by her husband, an attack partly witnessed by two of the couple's children. So where would this happen? Did this happen on the, in, the, in the room? Let's see. Two daughters who gave statements during the emotional first day of the sentencing hearing on Wednesday spoke about their father, but, not, but did not speak to a specific sentence. Huh. Assistant, let's say, hopefully the healing process can begin for the family. Yeah, well, the dad's in jail and the mom's dead. So I don't think there's much to heal. I think the best way to move forward is for these uh, those three daughters to maybe study their dad and learn who not to marry. As just straight up, like, try to marry a guy that's not like your dad because she might just, um, you know, go a little bit crazy on the carnival cruise, to say the least. It's been Undead Chronic, guys. Take it easy. Hey, guys. It's Undead Chronic, and I have some great news. The Chronicles comic book is finally in the works. Let us celebrate, my brothers. But we need to keep this momentum going. We need to fund the pilot comic book. And it, we are so close. We are so in range. So if you want to fund the Chronic Chronicles comic book, consider donating to paypal.me slash the Chronic. Make sure you tell me in your description that you're donating for the comic book and I could send you some of these dope draw line arts like this. What we got here, Ribby, has been hitting the gyms. My man's deltoids are as big as his damn waist. But Chronic, wielding the sword of red pill, is here to cut through the cucks. Now the pilot for this comic, the first comic for the Chronicles, is uh, the escape from the Google Gulag, where Ribby is going to help Chronic bust out of the censorious prison. Um, you know, slay some cucks, roast some feminists, all that good kind of stuff. So again, if you want to fund this comic book, consider donating to paypal.me slash theundeadchronic. We gotta keep our artists blazed, my boy!